after testing out the Eufy S340 outdoor dual camera, I wanted to see what Eufy's indoor dual camera was like. This camera is packed with AI features that take home security to a new level. Whether you're concerned about intruders or just want to keep an eye on your pets, the no subscription necessary AI detection in this little camera might make it worth checking out. I'm Wonder 001. Let's get into this. Starting off with some general specifications of this Wally looking camera as it stares soulfully into the camera. You are looking at a device that is 4.11 inches high with a width of 3.16 and a depth of 2.57. The camera itself is actually a dual band Wi-Fi camera in that it can use both the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi spectrum, but also is a Wi-Fi 6 compatible camera. There are not many cameras, even in this day and age of Wi-Fi 7, that can utilize this Wi-Fi standard. So even with this being a little older than some of the newer cameras that are coming out, it still has better Wi-Fi capabilities than some competitor cameras that you might be looking at. Coming to the front of our device, before we talk about our lenses, at the top here, there are two IR lights, and in the middle, there is your microphone. This is a dual camera system with one camera lens being our 4K wide resolution camera at 3840 by 2160. It does support digital zoom on the wide field camera and has a field of view of 130 degrees with an f.16 aperture. The telephoto lens, on the other hand, is a 2K 1920 by 2160 resolution with three times optical zoom, meaning not digital. This will mechanically zoom in and has an aperture of f1.6 just like the 4k lens your motion range because this is a pan tilt camera with dual lenses is 360 degrees horizontal as you might imagine with a vertical motion range of 75 degrees the video that you'll get from this whether you're in the split screen mode which you'll see a little later in the application or using the 4k single view is 15 frames a second whether that's day night it's always going to be 15 frames a second moving down the camera on the front here we have our led status light this will be blue when it's not doing anything red when you're looking through the camera or red when it is recording squeaking back up just under wally's soulful eyes there we have our sd card slot cover and there we can see sd card slot we can get up to a 128 gigabyte card in this particular camera the motion range of the head itself does make that a little tricky to access but the sd card is only one of the ways that we can locally store our video files with this camera if you do not wish to store them locally to the camera the s350 is also compatible with eufy's home base 3 which has the ability to have up to a 16 terabyte ssd or hard drive where you can offload the videos to if you utilize the home base 3 you also get extras like the bionic mind ai where it can tell friendly faces from strangers and learns over time to better enhance those ai triggers the home base 3 is not included out of the box with this camera however i have seen eufy set up bundles where they do include the home base 3 and one last thing about that home base 3 is that it can be either a wired solution connected directly to your wi-fi router or wireless after setup, making the placement of this camera and the home base a little easier. And if we come around to the back of our camera, we have our speaker flipping to the underside. Here we can see we've got our USB-C charging port and a nice cable channel, which I greatly appreciate. There's a cutout. And then we have some rubber feeties and our little mounting option. Should we want to hang this upside down? I will say that the little rubber feeties here are kind of small and I wish they were a little bigger and a little more, shall we say, rubbery. They slide quite a bit, which comes up in my testing a little later. There also is a sync button, which is how you'll set up this camera. With this being a powered camera, that means you do get a cable for this, but what else do you get with this camera? Let's use that as a segue to see what else we get in the box. We have a quick start guide, positioning sticker for mounting, convenient packaging containing mounting screws and anchors, wall mount, and USB adapter, camera itself, the USB-A to USB-C. We saw that power cable that we got, and I mentioned before the nice deep channel under here for it. I wanted to also mention that that cable is just shy of six and a half feet long, making this much easier to place compared to some of its competitors. Now that we know what we get with it, let's see how easy it is to set up the S350. This is setup of the Eufy Indoor Cam S350. 
you're going to start by opening up your Eufy application and then come up to the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. You're then going to look for wired camera. And then here you can see right at the top, what home do you want to add it to? I'm going to add it to my current home, but you can add a different home here if you wanted to. We're going to select next and it's giving us the option of, do we want to do this over Wi-Fi or do we want to do this via the base station? If you do it over Wi-Fi, you will connect directly to your wireless network. If you do it over the home base, as you might imagine, you're going to be connecting this to the home base. So all the clips from this will be saved on the home base. I'm going to select home base and it's letting me know after doing this, new recordings will be saved to the home base. We have to plug things in and we're going to wait for this light to be a solid blue. Right now it's a purple and there we can see the camera is calibrating itself and there is our blue right there. So we're going to hit next. There's a QR code on the back, which we are going to bring over here and scan. Next, we're going to hold down the sync button right here on the bottom until we heard a beep. We heard a beep, and we are now flashing. I'm going to select heard a beep, and now it's connecting the camera. Here, it wants me to do over Wi-Fi, even though I thought we were doing it over the base station, but uh, we will proceed. Okay, once we have our Wi-Fi information, we're going to confirm. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. And it states connecting to the Wi-Fi network, and we're going to give that a moment. Setup is successful, and it's calibrating again. And we select next. And then our next step is connecting to the home base three. So we're going to hit next. This part, I will have to move the camera downstairs because I'm not by the home base three. We'll see if it can do it because technically it's right under us. If this doesn't work, I will unplug and move it closer. Oh, nice. Success. It's connected to the home base. I didn't have to bring it downstairs. That's nice. Where is this going to be? I'll say living room, but we could customize somewhere else if we wanted to. So we have notification type, most effective, full effect, and then includes a thumbnail. Most effective, you're getting things right away without a delay. And text, full effect is text notification first and then the thumbnail to follow when available. And then include thumbnail is you don't get notification until the thumbnail is fully generated. So we're going to do our middle one here. And you may notice, if I bring this a little closer to the screen, there is a disclaimer now from Eufy stating, in this mode, footage preview thumbnails will be temporarily stored on the cloud to deliver better experience for event notification. So if you are trying to avoid cloud-based anything, you're not going to want the full effect. For my testing, I'm going to leave it. Here we have microphone on and audio recording. If you wanted to turn those off, that's where you can do that. And then it's kind of walking you through how you're going to mount it. So in my case, it's just going to sit on a table, but there's directions for wall mount and ceiling mount. Clicking on one of those will walk you through it, as you can see. What will I be using this to monitor? I do not have baby or children, and I could do all other motion, but we're going to leave it at that. Choose the perfect spot. It's kind of walking you through the setup process, letting you know the angle of the individual camera lenses. And then congratulations, it's all done. And there we are in my office. Connection is great. Here we have AI tracking on or off. This will track something if it sees it. So we're going to turn that on. Technically, if it saw me, it would start to follow me like that but I'm around the camera, so it's a little tricky. We have some preset positions that we could set it to if we wanted to, and we have the manual control right here. So I'm going to leave that is for now. As always, there is a firmware update. So to complete, you're just going to make sure you hit the update button. With setup out of the way, the S350 is compatible with voice assistants such as Alexa and Google Home. So if you wanted to watch your video feed on those devices or interact with it via voice commands, you can. Those are set up in the application, much like prior privacy mode, and patrol points of interest. Have I piqued your interest? Let's take a look at the application. This is the application for the Eufy Indoor Cam S350. As we can see, it is up here on the top, and we've got a time date stamp, a three-dot quick menu to get us to the settings. If we tap on that, we can access our settings or snooze our camera right from here. Selecting snooze, you can select anywhere from 15 to 12 hours, meaning the camera will turn itself off, not give you any notifications, and not record anything. There also is a quick toggle in the upper left-hand corner here. For privacy mode, clicking that means the camera will spin around to your privacy mode location and not record anything. Here we have the name of the camera as well as its connectivity status. And to the left of the three dots is our notifications. Notice I have 99 plus because well, while I'm testing this, I have my accounts running around in here. If I select this, this will bring me to the location of all of those clips. Uh, that's down here in events. But we will come back to that a little later. And here you can see uh, my cat is wandering through frame as we speak. And now I have one since I looked at all of those clips prior. And this last icon, if I select this, 
is a playback timeline. The beauty of the S350 is that it is a wired camera, meaning that it can record all the time and then have these clipped areas. So right there, kind of lost track of the cat. But again, we'll come back to that later. That's what that icon is for. Now, if we press the play button in the middle here, that will bring us into the camera itself. Here you can see right now I have it set for the dual camera mode. And I kind of like this mode because, well, you get a wide swath of what's going on as well as a in close look at a specific area. From here, I can see the chair that he normally sits in, the couch he normally sits in, and the hallway if he's going down to get some food. But you can see, here's a comparison. It's a little tricky to see if he's on that couch, but if it's zoomed in as it was, then I'd be able to tell a little better. And then I do have the auto tracking on, which is why the camera shifted. But after 10 seconds, the camera will move itself back to its home location. Right here, we have the name of the camera as well as its connectivity status. And then here we have a trigger for the alarm. And hopefully my guy's a little far enough away. If I select that, you can trigger the camera to have the sound. Or if you have the home base three, you can select to have that trigger as well. So you can do one or the other or both. In my case, I will just do the camera. Confirm. Now it's going off. Oh, poor guy. I am so sorry. We'll stop that because he is not happy about that. But again, here you can see the wide angle versus the close. And if you are wondering, he has a little diabetic patch on him to let me know what his blood reading is like if you happen to see that in the camera. Moving down, we have the ability to change this to full screen mode and it will shift the way that our tools are. But notice in full screen mode, we lose the ability to have the stack. So from here, we can either select one time zoom or the three time zoom on the side, just like that. And then we'll back that out. And then I will select to go back to the view that we were in before. There is one downfall of this. In this mode, you can only have up to 2K. If you want the full 4K that this can do, you will have to have just the wide angle view. If you swipe on your screen, you can move the camera left, right, up and down, as you can see there. And we'll just focus back in on him while we do the rest of this. Coming down and to the left, we have our record. If I select record, this is going to record what is happening in real time. Whatever's on screen, his little movements there will be recorded. I click on that and it will save it to the downloads area. Here we have a toggle for sound. That is your ability to hear what is going on from the other end of this. Here we have our full duplex. So if I select that now, he, if he wants to pay attention, yep, there he goes. He thinks he'll get treats if he stares at this thing long enough. He can hear me and then I can hang up. If there was a person there and they spoke back to you, you would be able to hear them and speak to them at the same time. Right here, we have our pan tilt controls. Notice that no matter what screen you're on, it's going to bring those up. So I kind of like the ability to be able to be on whatever screen and then adjust my pan tilt controls however I want. Here is playback. We were in that location before where it's a timeline of all the things that happen. And each of these yellow lines is something that has happened. This blue is just the camera recording and it is using local AI. And that's why it has picture of the cat. Is this a pet? Yes, this is a pet. And now I've taught the local AI that that's my pet as he's walking around. If we pinch to zoom, we could see each of these events. And if I come to this one here, that's the cat again. There we go. This is me walking in front of the camera. And here it's identifying that there are two people. Here we can play pause, move forward, move back, turn off the sound. Or we can speed this up to 16 times as fast in order to get through a longer clip if we wanted to. While we're in our clips, we can select download. It will download that specific clip. I can share it. I can donate it. And I can delete this particular clip. And we're going to select back. That was all under our playbacks area. Eufy has changed the way that their application works. So now you just slide to the left and you get more icons. Here we have our snapshot, it's a pair of scissors, but all that means is you take a still image of whatever's on the screen right at this time. Here we have our night vision. Well, do we want auto, off, or on? AI tracking, you could turn that on or off. Right now it's off. What that means is it will not target a human or a pet that happens to walk in a frame. I actually like that feature, so I have that on. Here we have our presets. Now you can set individual presets in the settings of this, but what this will allow you to do is toggling your preset will move the camera to predefined locations. And you can see this says one, three, and three. If you were on the single view, which I'll show you later, it would zoom in and punch into those areas. And then we'll just move the camera again. 
to give you an idea of what those presets are like. And you can notice while I move the camera back to its home position, that there is a little distortion as it moves, but it's a small price to pay for what you can do with this camera. Now we also have our 360 degree look, which will just rotate the camera 360 degrees in a slow panning fashion. So here you can really kind of see the distortion, especially on these vertical blinds. Here we're gonna hit a wall, but as we move, you'll see them kind of bow a little bit. Again, it's not terrible because it's really on the far ends to give it that wider field of view. And it's gonna, again, like I said, do a full 360. So it's gonna come all the way to the wall over here before returning to its center or set point. And we'll give that a moment to go back. While it's rotating, I'll move on to the next icon, which is the last icon, and that is calibration. If you select calibrate, it's gonna move itself around. This is not meant for you to see what's going on. This is meant for the camera to find its true center point so that when you have it placed, you know this is where it should be and then you can move it physically and then set your different motion points. That is everything that we can do to control this camera. Let's move up to the settings, which is where the meat of what this camera can do is located. Starting off in the upper right-hand corner, we have a button to toggle on and off privacy mode. Again, depending on where you set your privacy mode, because you can change that down here, is where this will rotate to. Here we have the name of our camera, its status, a little image, and then it is connected to our home base. If we wanted to, we can connect this to Wi-Fi and have an internal SD card, but I have the home base, so I figured I might as well use it. Here you can see you have two different options, and that would be for the SD card or the home base, in that you can continuously record and have events, or you can record events only. If you're using a powered camera, I always recommend using the continuous recording and then be notified for events, whether that's saving it to the home base or an SD card within the camera. Here we have our motion detection. Selecting this allows you to turn on and off motion detection, and then we could set up activity zone. So if I select set, this will allow me to set up an activity zone. And we would do that by pressing the plus sign. And then we get this hexagonal shape. And we can do that two times. You can see two different colors. And I like this because it is very adjustable. The one problem that I have with activity zones on a camera that moves is those activity zones don't disable the motion. And if something's moving, that zone moves with it. Here we have detection types. So we have human recognition enhanced powered by the home base three, just like human detection powered by the home base three, vehicle, pet, and all other. Now you can have some of these with just having the SD card, but really what you want this for is to be paired with your UV system and that system has the home base. Here we can have detection sensitivity and then AI tracking, meaning will it follow a person or a pet or vehicle? Here we have sound detection. Well, if I turn this on, it will say, what types of sound? Well, you can have all sounds, a baby crying, which I don't have in my house, so can't test that, and then sensitivity, and then round look. When a sound is detected, the camera will actively look around to automatically find out what is happening. Coming back, we have our pan tilt settings. Here is another place that we can toggle on and off the AI tracking. Here we have our screen gestures. That was me moving it up and down, and then I forgot to show you the tap to focus, which is the zoom, which is just a double tap. We have a pan tilt settings. So this is our rotation speed, and then another area where we can calibrate. We have auto cruise. Right now I have this disabled, but if you turn this on, the camera will automatically rotate through your presets every 10 seconds. So if you select tour, this is gonna give you an example of what your camera is going to do. And I'll give it about, well, it's 10 seconds before it will actually trigger. So I'm going to try and talk to see if it'll trigger. There we go. Now it's moving to the next zone. And notice it's the single view right now. So it's doing that push in as I talked about before. Now, if you don't wanna have the cruise mode enabled all the time, you can add a rule, which is pretty much just setting up a schedule. From when to when do you want this to happen? The interval between its ships and then what days of the week? So this is very customizable if you don't need that cruise happening all the time, which is great. And then calibration, calibration enabled. If you have this in auto enabled, after active, this feature, the camera, will automatically calibrate when the tracking process complete. And this means that the camera is going to calibrate itself pretty much after every action it takes. So I would recommend disabling that. It's unnecessary. Angle settings, so here we have our privacy angle. 
This is, again, the default position for this, but maybe I don't want it looking up. I can select down or to the right or left. My one problem with this is when you bring it down, you cannot bring it down far enough that it feels like the camera is not looking at something. So that's why they have it angled up and turned around. Here we have our preset positions and notice it's going through a calibration process as I come in here. So we're gonna give that a moment to do its thing. When you're setting up your presets, you're always gonna see it in this single view, which is why this one is listed at three and notice it shifts it over and pushes in. If I wanted to delete one of these, I simply press the X in the upper right hand corner. And then to set a new one, I can bring the camera to the position I want, make sure I hit the box that I want, and then hit set, and that will add it to there. I can also select this and set it as the default position. After our align settings, we come down to our video settings. From here, we have our night vision. So again, auto, off, and on, watermark, and timestamp. So I can have timestamp and logo. I can have timestamp only, or I can turn everything off. I like having both the timestamp and the logo. View mode, right now I have it on the dual load. You can see up to 2K, or I can select the single mode, which will allow me to get up to 4K video. Coming down, we now have stream quality. If I had the dual, I would not be able to select 4K. I would only be able to select 2K and this would be grayed out. Record quality, likewise, well, here we go. Now that I'm doing the single video mode, I can select 4K. So you have options to set up for both the streaming quality and your recording quality. And then we have our privacy zone, add privacy zone. I like this in that if you set up a privacy zone, well, the camera will no longer move. If you set up a privacy zone, what this will be is just a box that prevents you from seeing or recording whatever is in that location. It's great if you have this in a sensitive area and you don't want to see something in one specific location. Maybe you've got sensitive information there or you have a baby script there and you don't want that showing up in your recordings. Privacy zone will take care of that for you. And then you can rotate your image 180 degrees, meaning, well, now we flipped it upside down because maybe I had this mounted on a ceiling as we can see here. And I'll pop back in there and really screw with your orientation because now it's upside down and we'll flip that back come down to our audio settings. Here we have microphone on and off, audio recording on and off, speaker, and then speaker volume. So if you ever needed to turn off your audio recording, because in some places you're not allowed to do that, that's where you would go. Here we have notifications. You can get notified for human, pet, crying, all sounds, all motion, and then your interval. So you can have notification, 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 which is what I was getting, which is why none of these are checked right now, uh, because my cat is rather active and I was getting it constantly. But you can have that delayed up to five minutes and you can select only things that you want to be notified, maybe only humans and maybe only pets. You also have different types of notification options. Most effective, you get the notification right away without delay, but it's only text. Full effect, you get text notification first, and then when available, the thumbnail will be produced. And then last is include the thumbnail, but this will take the longest because it does not send a pre-notification with just text. And then here we have motion alerts, a tone, so you can set as default or come in here and change to any one of those. And moving on to general. We have the name of the unit, the LED status light on the front. We have our storage. So right here we have local storage. This is not local. This is actually using the home base three. We can format. This would be the same if you had an SD card or clear. Not going to do either because I have multiple cameras going to that home base. We have cloud backup. This is where Eufy will charge you a fee if you chose to use this. Here you can see kind of the pricing for that. But I like the fact that Eufy does not require it because you can have the home base local storage or you can have an SD card. And then here you have NAS RTSP support. Selecting that, well, here you go. It will walk you through the steps of setting that up if you wanted to use it. Next, we have our Wi-Fi. Well, I am connected to the home base, so I do not have a Wi-Fi name here. But if you needed to change your Wi-Fi connection, that's how you could do it. You have your mounting. So... 180 degrees, flip that upside down, placement guidelines, installation, it will walk you through the process of all that. And then about this device, there's going to be some sensitive information in there, so I will not be showing you that. You have the ability to share this device, so you can select invite, and then you can give somebody admin access to your camera or guest access, meaning they can't do anything except view. They will need to have their own Eufy app and Eufy email. So keep that in mind when sharing and then share your thoughts with Yuffie about your camera. Last on this page is the remove this device. So if you wanted to get rid of this camera from your Yuffie app, that's how you would do it. And here you can see now that I'm on the single view, this right here is showing me 4K. If I select that, I can change this to 2K, 1080, 720 or auto. This was also an option when I had the dual view, but I wanted to show you this screen because if I tap tap, that will zoom things in and then double tap to zoom out. Or you can even pinch to zoom to get 
a little closer and I'll double tap out. And then if you're in the single view down here, you'll have a toggle between the one and three X and then you'll watch the camera zoom in and you'll see where it cuts over to the closer view, but it's not terrible. You do notice it, but it's not too disjointing, but it's kind of why I prefer the dual view, but it's trade off. You don't get as high quality video with the double versus the single. But that has been everything that we can do in the Eufy application for the Eufy S350. The Eufy application is very robust and the controls that we get for the S350 are no different. I was very surprised at some of the options that I got with this compared to other pan tilt indoor cameras. But this is a powered camera. It is not a battery powered camera. That means that this is going to consume power all the time. What I like to do is run some tests to see what power consumption is like for powered cameras like the S350 here. When idling, it uses 1.7 watts of power. That means it's not recording, it's just hanging out on your Wi-Fi. In the daytime, it will use up to 2 watts of power, meaning it's not in privacy mode and it's actively recording. Day mode, while it is moving or rotating, it uses as high as 4.8 watts of power. IR mode, just sitting there recording, it uses 4.3 watts of power and IR mode while moving uses 6.3 watts of power. Nothing terrible, also considering that it's not going to be moving all the time unless you set it up to follow those AI triggers. Moving on with our testing, audio. We see the speaker in the back there, we see the microphone. How good is the audio quality from this camera? What I can tell you is it is actually pretty good considering the size and location of the speaker as well as the microphone. But don't take my word for it, let's take a Sally listen. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Test one, test two, test three, and test. Noticeable in a quiet room, but don't hear it in the video. Next, I like to test video because this is a camera and that's primarily what a lot of people are going to use it for. What I will say is starting off, there will be a link in the corner there for the raw video footage in a separate video as the video that you'll see in this has been downscaled to 1080 and that would not do justice to the 4K or even the 2K video that this can shoot. What I can say for video, during the day, things look sharp and clear on the single 4K view, even when tracking mode is on. It did have an issue when first testing this particular view locking on at first, meaning it took a little longer than I thought it should to lock onto a target to track. Split mode also looks good. The camera does look up towards human faces when tracking, which I really appreciate, and it will do that on both the single and the double view. Low light, not the best thing that I've seen from an indoor camera. There are portions that do look washed out, especially when testing just in low light situations, meaning all my blinds are closed and I only have two very dim-ish lights to test with in my living room. However, both moving and non-moving single and double views. The IR lights do very well, considering that there are only two of them. Movement in the single and double lens view look fine. I did find some issues in that in the IR mode, it did stop a little sooner than I thought it should when recording, and that was both in the single and double, and I'm not entirely sure why, but the video in the IR mode looks crisp, and you can identify both words on my shirt as well as my face from fairly far out. And Yuffie says that you should be able to see up to 30 feet away. All that great video footage, minus the few little caveats that I was mentioning, is absolutely worthless unless the camera can detect movement, pets, and people. But let me show you what my detection tests were like for the S340. Notification speed test on 5G, motion capture, let's see, get to about here, should already see me, should be sending me, there it is, there's the notification, so somebody spotted, and there we go, single view mode. Notification test on 5G. Coming around the corner, it should see me. I see the red light popped up, so it does know I'm here. I'm getting closer and waiting for that notification to pop off. There it is. And there it's where it saw me. Actually, a little further in than the double. 
but you did hear me talking about some of the video issues that I ran into. And just like with any product, it can't be all sunshines and rainbows. And the S350 is no different. I did come across some cons and I want to let you know about them. The camera slightly shifts when going through the calibration mode or the vibrating. So when it goes to privacy mode and it undoes the privacy mode, it hits the furthest most point and shakes. And that's why I was talking about these little rubber feeties are not enough to keep it in place depending on your surface. Now, see, I'm, this is moving quite a bit. I appreciate the fact that the rotating portion is separate from the camera and everything else, but it, it needs to be weightier or these need to be bigger. Just food for thought. The 4K that is advertised with this camera is only available on the single view. If you use the double view, it will not do 4K. It will reduce it to 2K. The limitations of that 75 degree vertical field of view. In my opinion, it does not look down far enough. I mean, you can kind of see right there, depending on where you place this, that might not be enough. It, it looks up pretty well. I wish it went a little higher, but then you'd really be hovering over it. But I feel the vertical movement is a limitation of this camera, unless you're mounting it upside down and then maybe you'll be okay. Target locking. When in either view, the first thing that comes into frame is generally what it will target lock onto. I tested this when my cats were running around last night. And if it's a pet and then a person walks into frame, it will stay locked on to that pet and not the person. I wish it would switch over to the person because in my opinion, the person is the more important thing when two things are in the frame. That could be changed in future software updates, but just know whatever wanders in the frame first is what this is going to stay locked on to. I also did run into an issue several times where the quick toggle for privacy mode on the front screen before you even click into the actual camera itself would not trigger it either turning on or turning off. Again, that could be fixed in future software updates if it is a ongoing problem. Even with what seems like a laundry list of cons, and that's just me being overcritical of this camera because the S340 that I tested for the outdoor camera to me was almost as good as an outdoor camera as I've tested. So I had high expectations for this and form factor wise, it's much smaller than that camera. So that could be some of the things that are causing the limitations. But if you're after a feature rich camera that does not force you to purchase a subscription to access all of those features that is reliable and affordable, then the Eufy S350 should be on your list. If this camera sounds like what you've been looking for, I will have a link for where you can pick one up for yourself in the description area below. If you appreciate the time and effort that goes into making comprehensive videos like this, make sure to hit that like button to help other people find the video as well. Do you know of another indoor dual pan tilt camera that I should check out? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like what I'm doing here and want to be notified of my next review, hit that subscribe button. Not sure if this is the right indoor pan tilt camera for you? On screen now, you'll see two other pan tilt cameras that I've reviewed so that you can make a more informed decision for yourself.